1949 Dunn School at 501 South Washington, which is on the corner of West Mulberry and Washington, was opened. It is named for A.H. Dunn. Mr. Dunn was the high school principal here and from 1893 to 1912 and superintendent from 1912 to 1930. He's best remembered for his Latin classes, but he started orchestra, health program, adult education programs in the evening. He was a Sunday school teacher for 20 years. One teacher remembers that he said, girls, make a mind. And if you have to spank them, hit them on the spot God intended them to be spanked on. He died in, in 1956 at the age of 89, so he was still alive when the school was opened. And every fall for the next several years, the first day of school, the teachers at Dunn School would always receive a corsage. There was never a name on the card, but they always were pretty sure that Mr. Dunn was the one that sent them all a corsage the day school opened. His daughter Dorothy lives in Fort Collins, and she was in uh, Longmont, was the first kindergarten teacher in Longmont and taught there for 34 years before retiring and moving to Fort Collins. Hi, I'm Denise Timmermans from Dunn Elementary and I'm interviewing Miss Dorothy Dunn. Um, could you tell us something about yourself? Well, Denise, uh, I am a real lady from Fort Collins. I was born here. Uh, 85 years ago. I was born down on Sherwood Street and the uh, house where I was born has been torn down and another home put in there. But this was right next door to the famous Judge Bolton home that uh, they built while we were living there. And my father had come here from, my father came from Maine to Fairplay, Colorado, to teach. And uh, then from Fairplay, he went back east and got my mother from Massachusetts and brought her out. And they lived in Fairplay uh, two years. And then he went to Golden. And then from Golden, he came up here to teach school. He taught Latin and literature and uh, then became superintendent of schools when he didn't teach anymore. What was his favorite class? Latin. Oh. I used to, you know, we, there were four of us in our family, and we all had to have Latin. They don't get it anymore, which is too bad, because Latin is a basis of medicine, in music and science and all the famous subjects. I have a background in Latin, but they took it out of schools and my father would have been very disappointed. But we all had to take Latin and it was pretty hard. Latin is a hard, hard subject. And, uh, but it was fun to have him helping us, you know. He wouldn't help us much. We had to get it ourselves. Yeah. What grade did What grades did he teach? He was just he was high school there, and he had no grades. He was wherever there was Latin. I think he was the only Latin teacher. Mm. And uh, you see, when he came here, where Steve's grocery is was the school, and the high school was upstairs. And the great school was downstairs. And I went to great school downstairs. And my father had the high school upstairs. And that was the only high school there was. Oh, was this, was the name done? When was it named? No, after? it's called Fort Collins High School. It shows how it's grown, doesn't it? Yeah. When was it named after? Uh, well, the school named after my father. It's a great school uh, that is, was named after him years later, dear. While well, he's still superintendent, though. Oh. 
and uh, we lived down in this little house, we call it the house in the woods. And it really was in the woods. There were big trees all around. And um, we had, we lived pretty primitively in those days. We had no electricity. We had no running water in the house. We had to go outside to get our water. Did you like, did you enjoy that? And, what? Did you enjoy living there? Oh yes, we had a good time. When we were, when we were young, we had a very good time. Our father and mother were very, very wonderful parents. But of course you didn't have a lot of the things going on, you know that you do nowadays to take away from family life. We had a real family life. A lot of us was centered around our home and our education and our church. We were, my parents were great church workers. Um, Mrs. Irish wrote this book about yes. your father. Yes. Um, what is it about? Well, it's, um, it's about his life, dear. Up until he was still living, my father was still living when he wrote, when she wrote that. And uh, she had gone to Chicago University to get her degree. And they asked her what she wanted to write her degree on. And she said, I want to do a biography on my superintendent. And they said, no, we don't allow it. And she was so disappointed. They said, well, Miss Irish, if you will give us a resume, we'll look at her and see what you think. So she gave them a resume, and they granted her the right to write a biography for her degree on my father's life. And it's about it. a lot of it centers. On the, on the uh, my father started the international clubs in the high schools in Colorado with Denver and Greeley and uh, other schools. And they, every year they would have these big international club meetings in Denver. And they would study Russia and Germany and France and all these places. A lot of those speeches in there and things in there pertain to that. Were there a lot of books written, written about them, about him? No, I think there's the only one that's strictly about him. Oh. But uh, he's, my father was, uh, he was a great, I'll say a lot of things about my father, but above all, he was a great educator. He believed in an education, and he saw that the children got us. Sometimes they weren't very happy, but they got us. And you could talk to any old teachers who'll tell you that. Now my father had a group of teachers that he called the old guard. And this was Miss Moore and Miss Kinchel and Miss Johnson and Miss Bowder and Miss the other schools that are named here. O'Day. Uh, O'Day. And Miss He called this group his old guard. Barton? Barton, oh yes. Both Bartons, mm -hmm. Sue and Mimi. One was out in the Rockwood School. And uh, he hired them all. And he called them his old guard. And they were really teachers. He knew how to become a teacher. I remember one time I was sitting in his office downtown, waiting to go home with him in the car. And he was interviewing a lady for a teacher. And I heard him say, Miss Stone's heart, would you mind taking off your hat? 
do you have that on? I go, why that? And she took it off. And he said, thank you. And he told her, he said, would you mind putting your hair behind your ears? And she did. And uh, it's just part of my initiation. He got the door vision of her whole face and her head in her hair. He hired her. I know I asked him afterwards if he hired her. I told him I feel sorry for her. And he said, well, that's the way I look at them and know what they're like. But uh, he was a great educator and he was a great teacher. Now I know the first day of school every year he always went to the first teacher's meeting and had a talk. And I've had teachers and teachers and teachers tell me what those meant to them. I've had teachers tell me what they would give. Do you hear a talk like that again? He made them glad and proud to be a teacher, not academically, particularly, but to be an influence on the lives of girls and boys. And he believed in literature. He believed in the best books possible. He treasured the Bible. I think you could say, where does so-and-so, where the Beatitudes come from? He'd tell you, where the dead and what must come from? He could tell you. He was a, quite a Bible student and believed in the Bible and didn't want it altered particularly. And uh, every morning, the school had to start with a poem, and uh, usually of his choice, usually about the country and their heritage and, and uh, he wanted young people to be proud of their heritage, which I certainly am. I have a wonderful heritage, and uh, I think very rare. My mother was a musician, and uh, she taught the pipe organ and piano. When they put the pipe organ in the church, the Methodist church, that was here on this corner over here. My mother played the pipe organ in 1908 when they put it in, until, apparently until she died. And she went to Denver every week and took pipe organ lessons. They had in the uh, auditorium down in Denver they had um, a beautiful, great, one of those great pipe organs. I never knew what happened to it. And every noon, this man named, what was his name, would go in there at noon. And from 12 to 1, he would go in and sit there and play. And people, would come in off the street and sit down and watch him play. Wilcox was his name. And my mother uh, took lessons of him every week. Your father was a real believer in kindergarten? Oh, yes. Now, not my father did in the Sabbath the kindergarten year, but he loved the kindergarten. And the kindergarten, the only kindergarten, was right here in Remington School on this place here where we're sitting was the Ranger School. And my father would come over here day after day after day and sit and watch the children and recite poetry to the children, which is one of my loves too. And uh, uh, they had this Merle Bennett who was the greatest, one of the greatest, I think she was the greatest kindergarten teacher I ever knew. 
and that subbiddle school is named after her. And uh, uh, my father would come and had spend time with the kindergarten children. Now he lives out on West Mountain Avenue. After we lived on Sherwood, my father built a house on Mountain Avenue, and it was the first house out there. There was nothing around us. Several block Mountain Avenue. There was nothing around us but fields. Did you enjoy enjoy the trolleys? Trolleys, yes. I didn't use them a lot. We used them some, but uh, uh, I don't like the trolley being put back in. I uh, I want it to be preserved. I don't mean that. I think it should be put, oh, maybe over where the old school, the old hotel, and things are over the museum. I think it should be preserved and well cared for. But I don't see him put a bike on Mountain Avenue. I don't like them taking up the trees. I understand your father really liked kindergartens. Yes. The first the first kindergarten west of the Mississippi was here in Fort Collins. And there wasn't any in Denver anywhere third of the ocean near, right here in Fort Collins. Now, who the superintendent was, I couldn't tell you. I didn't know. But it was not my father, although he loved them. And uh, then uh, I, the uh, teachers thought so much of my father, you know. But they had a, they had a way at the high school over at the grade school. When the father was first superintendent, they had a book of poetry. And uh, if my father was in the building, and they thought he was going to come to call, one teacher would send the book to the next teacher, and that teacher would send it to the next teacher. And that had that been Mr. Dudley's here. You better get ready. <laughs> the teachers have told me that. How about they loved him? And, uh, well, let's see on him. Uh, did he have any special hobbies? Well, um, did I? Or my father? Your father, and you? Not specially, dear. Just the church. And, uh, this hobby of this international clubs. He went to there for a great deal working on those. He had wonderful people working with him. The president of the University, Miss Fact and Mr. Fuller, and Mr. and Mrs. Bessman, and had great educators he had working with him. Oh, thank you for having us coming. You're welcome, I love seeing you.